We now come to the pinnacle of the evening's award, the annual salute to Godlike Genius. To present the Godlike Genius Award, please welcome back Connor McNicholas and the director of Batman and Sleepy Hollow is Tim Burton! Tonight, we honour a band who have simply defined the enemy as much as they have defined alternative music. Never has a single band been able to take us to such extremes. They have shared moments of utter despair, but also taken us to moments of soaring elation. At their heart is a frontman and songwriter who takes his place as one of the most iconic rock stars of all time. But before we go any further, let's have a few words from the amazing Tim Burton. I, I, I just want to say that a long time ago when I was an animator at Disney, chained to a desk having to draw cute talking animals, I was fucking depressed and this music was the only thing that really saved me. I mean, if it could make a manic depressive happy, they did it. And they just spoke to anyone who felt strange and weird. And I just want to thank them for inspiring me and so many other people for so long. And they truly deserve this. And uh, let's take a look at, uh, I don't know, something over here through the trees. <laughs> I grew up with The Cure. They were the soundtrack to my adolescence. They've managed to survive the, the ebb and flow of fashion. That's a, uh, a strong indicator of a great band. You know. They write the best love songs ever, you know, the, and lyrically, I just think it's really, really, really beautiful. You know? They've got their own sound. When you hear The Cure, you know it's The Cure. I think you've got The Cure album, which is morbidly and unrelentingly, unrelentingly depressing, sort of disintegration, or you have more kind of kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, which is sprinkled with gold dust of, you know, amazing pop moments like in between days. And I think they've had a huge impact, especially melodically. You know, just those big anthemic melodies that they had. I think that, you know, there's so many bands who try to do that now and who tried to do that then, you know, when they were out. I think, um, I, mean, I don't know, I was sure would love to sound like them. You can hear the impact of The Cure in the other bands that, that have elements of their flavour within them as well. Look at bands like Friendly Fires and Foles and White Lies are all heavily influenced by the work of The Cure and if The Cure hadn't have existed, neither would those bands, I don't think. So wonderfully, 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 wonderfully pretty. When I was like, you know, 13, 14, I used to hang out with these two girls. I used to back comb my hair and stuff, put lipstick on my hair. Go, you look like Robert Smith. And I was like, who the hell's Robert Smith? But I was getting me in with these girls, so. <laughs> he must be cool. And then years later, I was like, oh, that's Robert Smith. It's all wonderfully, wonderfully, oh, wonderfully, wonderfully pretty. For me, there was no band. Uh, through high school and college, there, there was just The Cure. And it's really all I listen to ever. Am I too late? Who are you? Dude! Robert Smith of The Cure! Wee. Really, Hall of South Park was just a ruse to try to meet Robert Smith. They definitely encouraged uh, the backcombing of your hair and uh, the, the misapplication of lipstick. I've stole so many makeup tips from Robert Smith, so I've got to love him. Their videos are brilliant as well, the whole yeah. mystique about them. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but also really, a kind of like, really good sense of fun. We just used to come up with these ideas and just muck around and have a laugh, and that was the primary thing. It was for me. Though. You speak to Robert, and he'll tell you that the videos were all a pain, and he absolutely hated making them. 
I always tried to make it as difficult for them as I could, like immersing them uh, in water or something, because I thought it was important for them probably to suffer, you know. It's close to me. They just performed the most impossible trick in rock music, which is infiltrate the mainstream, become gigantically huge, but kind of keep your integrity. I think people still sound like them in years to come, and people will still be influenced. I don't think they're ever going to be forgotten. They managed to be this band who are outside of everything. They are the cure. Gentlemen, boys and girls, the cure. So long, uh, how you spin? <laughs> Have you ever been experienced? Well, I am. I'm the team. Thank you very much. This is very different to being up on singing. It's always, it's so... Anyway, thank you very much, and thank you very much to The Enemy for giving us this award. It, it's, um, it's a great honour, and we're very flattered, very surprised, very pleased to get it. And thank you very much to Mr Burton for taking the time out to give us the award. It makes it all that much more special. And I'm on, up here on my own, um, but I'd like to thank the band, Simon, Jason and Paul, for sticking with me for the last 33 years of cureness. And finally, I'd like to thank everyone that's been to the shows and listened to the music and bought the records and been into us, that's dug us down the years. It's like, you make it all worthwhile. And if you've had half as much fun as we've had, then it's all been more than worthwhile. Thank you very much. And as all, uh, congratulations to the winners. Thank you to all the bands who played tonight and, of course, to our guest presenters. It's been an emotional night. And now, to play us out is the godlike genius winners themselves. Please welcome the Cure.
Just like heaven. Just like heaven.